Hey, we give you the facts. It's not what you think. Popeye News Link. Young King. One yard. Bless. Good morning, Popeye. Grandma watch Popeye's every morning and every night. Greetings. Greetings, viewers and subscribers. People of Pisgah in the parish of St. Elizabeth. Don't miss this one. It's the Pisgah Dream Weekend and Back to School Treat. It will be held at Tarnes Chill Spot at Pisgah in the parish of St. Elizabeth on Saturday, August 26 and Sunday, August 27. Popeye News Links is one of the sponsors for this event and over the next few weeks, we'll be giving you some more information. But ensure that you mark this one on your calendar. It's the Pisgah Dream Weekend and Back to School Treat. Don't miss it. Now, later in this video, a man was shot and killed at Flamstead in the parish of St. James yesterday. Don't miss the exclusive details as to what led to this man's death. It's coming up shortly. But first, we are learning that yesterday morning, Saturday, July 15, there was a dispute at Shantytown in the Paradise Nowood area of Montego Bay. A female, she's known as Doreen. She and her relatives, they were involved in an argument with a guy who sells CDs. This guy, he's popularly known as Killer. We are told that one of Doreen's son, he's known as Ramoy, he was also involved in the argument. The allegations are that Doreen, the mother, she used a knife to cut Killer on one of his hands. It is further alleged that Killer, he used a knife to stab Ramoy, that's Doreen's son, in his chest. Ramoy was rushed to hospital. Now, about 12.30 p.m. Killer, he was walking along the Shantytown main road when he was approached by a guy named Jordan. Jordan, he is Doreen's son, so he is Ramoy's brother. Remember that Killer, he had used a knife to stab Ramoy in his chest. Well, it is said that Jordan, he approached Killer, pulled a gun from his waist and opened a barrage of gunshots at Killer. Jordan, he then ran away, making good his escape. It is also said that Killer, he managed to run off. Residents of the area, they called the police. The police came and after a search of the area, Killer, he was found in a gully, suffering from gunshot wounds to his back and his right foot. The police, they rushed with Killer to a nearby hospital where he was treated and admitted in a serious condition we are told that when the police processed this crime scene nine nine millimeter spent shells were recovered from the scene the mayhem now in this next story that guy on your screen his name is omar nichols but he's popularly known as ras ras celebrated his 40th birthday last month on june 12th he lived at top hill in the mount Carey area of the parish of St. James. It is said that Ross, he used to be good friends with a gang leader in the same area. That gang leader, his name is Omar Largi, but he's popularly known as Not Nice. Not Nice is said to be either in his late 20s or early 30s. It is also said that Not Nice and Ross, they had a falling out over eight years ago or thereabout. And they have been at loggerheads ever since. It is also said that Ras and his family, they have some dogs in their yard. And these dogs, they were always rushing at and biting people. Early yesterday morning, Saturday, July 15, about some minutes to 9 o'clock. A female, she's about 15 years old. She was walking past Ras yard when one of the dogs ran out and bit her. We are told that when the female spoke to Ras about it, him style her up bad bad. The female and not nice, they are cousins. And not nice, he heard about what took place. Now, about some minutes to 11 o'clock yesterday morning, Ras, he was standing at his gate when he was accosted by 
not nice. It is said that not nice. He pulled a gun from his waistband and he opened the gunfire at Ras. Ras managed to run off in his yard, but not nice. He decided that a dirt for Ras today. Not nice. He chased Ras, still firing gunshots at him. Ras, he was hit and he fell to the ground. We are told that not nice. He pumped more bullets into Ras. Not only that, we are told that not nice. He picked up a big stone and went over Ras. He then dropped the big stone in Ras' head, then walked away. Not nice, he made good his escape on foot in the area. Ras, who received gunshot wounds to his face and his left hand, he died on the spot. The police were called and when they processed this crime scene, a number of 9mm pen shells were recovered from the scene. The mayhem. The me so let me ask you something. <laughs> let me ask you something. Have you hit on the love button as yet? If you have not yet done so, remember to hit on it. Also, if you are over here watching our videos and you have not yet subscribed to the channel, hit on the subscribe button as also. Hit on the notification bell. Then click all so that whenever we drop a new video, you will be one of the first to be notified. Now, here are some stories that we are working on for our next video. First, we are learning that one of Westmoreland's most wanted hoodlums, he was captured in a raid early this morning. He is popularly known as Tuggy Tuggy. He was wanted for the offense of murder. Next, we are learning that there was an accident at Belmont in Westmoreland earlier today. A guy named Brandon from White House in Westmoreland, he was killed as a result. We are also learning that two men were shot and killed by hoodlums in the parish of Hanover this morning. One was killed at Glasgow in the Kingsville police area and the other one, he was killed at Montpelier in the Sandy Bay police area. We are gathering the details and we'll be updating these stories in our next video. Stand by for that. But in the final story for today, and you're gonna want to listen to this one to the very end. I carried a story on Monday of last week. It was about the shooting of a guy. I told you that his name is Stephen but he's called Daga. Daga is only 19 years old and he's from the Flamstead area of St. James. I told you that on Sunday afternoon, July 9, about 6 o'clock. Daga, he was riding a bike with another guy called Turbo on the back. They were riding in the Sharkastle area of St. James when they were signaled to stop by a guy who was on another bike. That guy, he's called JT. Daga stopped and he and JT spoke for a while when it is said that JT, he pulled a gun from his waist. Daga and JT, they got into a tussle for the gun. JT, he managed to squeeze the trigger, shooting Daga twice in his belly and once on his left foot. JT, he then made good his escape. Now, Daga, he was assisted to a nearby hospital where he was treated and admitted. We are learning that this is not the first time JT shot and injured Daga. Now, I'm going to be telling you about these two guys. I'm going to be telling you about Daga and then you're not going to want to miss the story about JT who also committed a murder in broad daylight yesterday. So, Daga, the 19-year-old guy who JT shot it is said that he also is a hoodlum. There is a picture of him on your screen. I had to put the photo in black and white because there is blood on his mouth. And YouTube don't like the blood business at all. Now, that's a picture of Daga. Shortly after he was attacked and stabbed by rivals in Montego Bay last month. We are also told that Daga and his cronies, they allegedly committed many robberies and steal 
many cars in the parish of St. James. We are also told that in May of this year, Daga and a few of his cronies in the Flamstead area, they are suspected to have stolen a car that is owned by a teacher in the same Flamstead area. Now, let me tell you about JT and as soon as I get his photograph, I'm going to be sharing it with you. JT's correct name is Romario Ferguson. He might be about 20 or 21 years old. He's from Flamstead, but he's said to be based in the Sharkastle area of St. James. JT is a hoodlum and he has been on the police radar for over three years now. There is a lot to be said, but let me start here. On the afternoon of Friday, November 19, 2021, about 2 o'clock, a tour bus operator named Ronnie Williston, but he was popularly known as Shrimpy. Shrimpy was 35 years old at the time. He lived at 13th Street in the Tucker Irwin area of St. James. Shrimpy, he was shot and killed at Grand Slane in the same Tucker Irwin area. Word on the street at the time was that a hoodlum named Bamed. He was the guy who shot and killed Shrimpy. In an act of reprisal for the killing of Shrimpy. Less than a month later, on the night of Friday, December 10, 2021, almost 12 midnight. Bamed, he was at a party at Germantown in the same area where he lived when he was attacked and shot. He had received gunshot wounds to his right hand. Word on the street at the time was that it was JT and one of his cronies who attacked and shot Bamed. On the morning of Sunday, December 13, almost 12 midday, two days after JT and one of his cronies shot and injured Bamed. Bamed and his cronies, they decided to take revenge. They armed themselves and they went to JT's home at Blue Hole Corner in the same Flamstead area. It is said that JT and his brother, they were at the house and they ran off. Their father was at the house. His name is Alan Ferguson, but he was popularly known as Shartman. He was 56 years old at the time and he was said to be a chef. The hoodlums, they shot and killed Shartman. Yeah man, can't catch Kwaku, so you catch him shot. Now, there is a lot that has happened since that time, but I'm going to fast forward to yesterday. Now, one of the guys who JT blamed for the killing of his father is a guy named Liko. It is also said that Liko, he's the member of a gang in the Flamstead area. Liko is living at Old Road in the Flamstead Gardens area. A man named Delroy Morris, but he was popularly known as Man. Next month, August 31, Man would be celebrating his 57th birthday. Man and Liko, they are cousins. Up to yesterday, Man was living in the same yard where Liko lived. It is said that from man was going to primary school. Everyone around him know that him head not so hundred. You know what that mean, right? It is known in the community that man him can't even mash fly. Yesterday morning, Saturday, July 15, almost 12 midday. JT, he armed himself with an M16 rifle and his crony. He was armed with a 9mm pistol. They went to Liko's home to kill him. We are not sure whether or not Liko was there and they ran away. But JT and his crony, they didn't catch Liko. So what did they do? They pointed their guns at man's head and squeezed. Killing him on the spot. JT and his crony, they then made good their escape. The police were called and when they processed, this crime scene, eight 5.56 and three 9mm pen shells were recovered from the scene. So, you the people of Flamstead, Germantown, Sharkcastle and surrounding areas, my question to you is, who next?
Which one of you next will I be carrying a mayhem story about? You know the hoodlums. You know who are hiding the guns for them. Save your lives. Save your children, your siblings, your parents, your relatives' lives. And boss pandi the boy them. Inform pan them. If you don't, I will continue to say, the mayhem continues. Blessed love, everybody. Tell a friend, for tell a friend, for tell a friend about Popeye News Link and PNL Blog TV. Like, subscribe, and share. Quick silver sin. If we just unite, what a country this will be. If we just unite, Jamaica live in unity. If we just unite, what a country this will be. Show, show.